Welcome to College Football Live, presented by Dr. Pepper. Welcome, everybody, to the college football season. He's loose. Oh, it just means more here on College Football Live. Emmanuel Acho, Jonathan Vilma, I am Peter Burns. Week one was awesome. Let's get right into it, boys, with week two because we got some monster games, including Clemson hosting Texas A&M. We're looking forward to that one. Rematch of last year's thriller in which the Tigers held off the Aggies late. Remember, Clemson won 13 of its 15 games by at least 20 points last season. That two-point win over the Aggies was the closest it came to losing all year long. That one, Saturday, 3.30 on ABC. The nightcap, oh, yeah, ABC ready to go. College game day will be there in the 5-1-2. Ed Ogeron takes his new-look offense in the sixth-ranked LSU Tigers to Austin to face ninth-ranked Texas. First regular season matchup between LSU and Texas since 1954. And you need Emmanuel Acho type money to get into this game, all right? LSU at Texas, the current get in price is crazy. Look at all these games. Regular season ones, oh, it's nice to have home and homes. It's going to be busy. Caleb on, Chase on for LSU had some thoughts about the challenge that Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger is going to bring. I'm glad that we get to go against him again. I don't really find him too much as a threat. I mean, not not taking a shot at him, but he more of, he more he uses his legs more than his arms. So just like just like high school, he can he, he has a decent arm on him, but it's more about his legs. Completely irrelevant. Um, don't really don't really care about the outside noise. Um, I'll say it again. Just like all the other criticism, um, we're gonna focus on the things that we can control and, and game plan for them, not not specific comments. This is what I want, boys. This is college football, little trash talk right here. Acho, how about that? Kayla Vaughn talking a little trash to Sam. I'm here for it. I love it, PB. I say college football, you either punk somebody or you get punked. Kayla Vaughn, he re recognizes. He says Sam is a runner. I hear him. That's what Sam was better at in high school. But check the game tape. Sam Ellinger, four touchdown passes in week one. Sam Ellinger last year, over 25 TD passes. But here's what I love about it. Everybody talks from Sunday to Friday. But on Saturday, you shut up and you got to let the pads talk. And that's what I'm most excited to see. Yeah, I'm excited to see Saturday as well, Acho, but there's some truth to what they're saying over at LSU. You look at Sam Ellinger in big games. Let's take it back to Maryland last year. Ill-advised interception to lose that game, first game of the season. Then you fast forward to Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, you have Taylor Cornelius, who arguably outplayed Sam Ellinger in that one. Then you go to a Big 12 championship game, down by eight, Fourth quarter, oh, last JV possession for in seats. the red zone, turns <laughs> the ball over. So there is some truth to what they're saying about Sam Ellinger. We know he can run the ball very well. I need to see him step up in the passing game, just like LSU needs to see him step up in the passing game. One of the things to look at, too, in this guy's is uh, Dave Aranda. Since he got there in 2016 as LSU's defensive coordinator, fourth best opposing QBR in all of college football, hovering right around 26. So we'll see that matchup. Matchup that's been kind of weird is Vegas odds on this thing. It's been nuts because this thing opened up around LSU, around a one-point to two-point favorite, then kept creeping and kept creeping and creeping. Now it's the second time in the last 10 seasons, favorite on the road versus a top-10 ranked opponent, Jay. TV. People saw the tape of LSU's offense. You did as well. You a believer? I'm a believer. You, you have the Vegas odds. What they do is dig down a little bit deeper. What they started doing is saying, well, why is the offense looking the way it does and being so crisp and efficient? It's because of a man named Joe Brady over at LSU. He spent time with the New Orleans Saints. He spent time with Sean Payton, and he's seen what it is to have tons of talent and use them effectively. So you go and you watch what LSU is doing right now, spreading them out. I can tell you right now, down at the bottom, that used to be Devery Henderson. Tight end position. Jimmy Graham. Up top, Marcus Colson, and you have Pierre Thomas running that little flag route or Darren Sproles. All they need to do is get to a spot. You get to a spot on the field, however you get there, and then you find the open man, which is what they do right here. Jimmy Graham for a touchdown right there, for a first down right there. Then you look at the situation, you say, all right, we are now down here in the fringe zone. I want to take a shot, just like Sean Payton used to do. So you put one of your best athletes in a sweet spot, so it's an easy throw for your receiver. It wasn't for your quarterback. It wasn't complete, but now check out what they do in the next time. Next time around, 
around they go. And look at the pass play. Nice chunk play to end the half, get them in field goal range. That is exactly, exactly what the Saints do. And we're talking next level stuff because it's not just putting your athletes out there. It's understanding the situational football. Yeah, and then now also it's going to be Joe Burrow. Five touchdown passes in the first half, an LSU program record, but he's going against the real DBU, right? Acho, I mean, you, you saw the shirts that Texas oh. busted out this week. What do you wait, think wait, of this wait, young Bert, secondary oh, rolling with wait, it? Wait, wait a Yo, minute. It's, this is it, it's not time, real It's time DBU. to figure What's it out, JV. It's, 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 time to, <laughs> it's time to figure it out. I went on record earlier and said that modern-day DBU is LSU, whereas all-time DBU is Texas. Well, on Saturday, somebody got to put up or somebody got to shut up. But real quick, to the Vegas odds makers, JV, because I, I wholeheartedly disagree with you. Them boys been sitting in those Vegas casinos drinking a little too long because <laughs> 6.5... That doesn't make any kind of sense as LSU being that kind of favorite. That's the problem, JV. You sat here and you said, you know, the Vegas odd makers, they dig a little deeper. They don't dig deeper than you, an analyst. You should know better because I know better. LSU's not winning by no six and a half. If they win, Otto, which you they have can to take do, off, it's going to be by Take two. off your orange, take off that orange longhorn pride that you have. Just There's look at on, the talent. The, look at the offense. No contacts. I'm telling you, it's going to be, they're going to win by eight to ten points. LSU's going right, to win right, by here, 8 to hey, 10 points. All right, all right, hang tight. We're going to get a full score prediction at the end of the show. So you guys mm -hmm. stop fighting or else we can't even do the rest of the show. Coach Bob Stoops <laughs> is waiting for us a little bit later. All right, another game that we can't wait to watch for is going to be Clemson in Texas A&M. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week preview. Clemson A&M face off of that rematch of last season's epic game. Aggies actually outgamed the Tigers in terms of total yards and first downs, but it was the Tigers who came out with that two-point victory would be their closest game of the season. JV, you were talking about odds makers. I mean, they're telling you this is like an 18-point possible blowout game. We got a blowout on our hands or another instant classic? I'm taking the blowout because I'm looking at Texas A&M and saying, who scares you? If I'm Clemson, I face the better quarterback in a title game than Kellen Mond. I face the better defense in a title game. I have now a seasoned veteran, whether you want to call him that or not, in Trevor Lawrence. I have T. Higgins on the outside. I have ATN in the running back backfield. And then, of course, the defense is always going to be lights out, where they just reload and reload and reload. So I don't see anything on the Texas A&M side that's supposed to scare Clemson. Yes, Clemson has to play well. They have to do well. But they perform and execute, I see a blowout. I think it'll be tight early. I think it'll be a little bit of a scare to JV's first point in that Kellen Mond was a dog last week, and Kellen Mond had some phenomenal moments at times last year. Furthermore, Jimbo Fisher, if anybody knows Dabo well, it's Jimbo dating back to their days at when Dabo was at, when Jimbo rather was at Florida State. Furthermore, you got to think, you have Kellen Mond on offense and what he can do but the AM's defense, I believe they were third in the country last year in stopping the run. If you can mm -hmm. make Trevor Lawrence one-sided and one-dimensional, now it's mano a mano. It's Kellen Mond, the young man you see there, versus Trevor Lawrence. And Kellen Mond might be able to outduel him. You don't have to be the better quarterback on any day. Kellen Mond has to be the best quarterback on Saturday. Real quick, JV, on, on that, we were talking about Trevor Lawrence and some of the issues that he had and throw it to both, to both of you guys. JV, I'll start with you. Trevor Lawrence threw two picks. A&M had four picks against Texas State, mind you. But, I mean, is there any concern that that might be one of the matchups you want to see this week? No, no concern at all. Trevor Lawrence, <laughs> it, when we talk about, okay, he had two picks, we're nitpicking right now. Let's look at Trevor Lawrence and his abilities as a quarterback and has he gotten better from last year? Well, I'm talking uh, the comfort level there. Obviously, he has that. The experience, he obviously has that. He's not going to force throws as we're seeing right here in the highlights. This is a big-time game. So he knows, all right, there are some things I can't do. There are some things I can do. And, oh, by the way, I have one of the best running backs right behind me or right next to me, and I have one of the best defenses. I don't have to do anything special. Remember, JV, Trevor Lawrence struggled most mightily last year against AM, had to get pulled and saved by Kelly Bryant, who led that team to two touchdowns in under six minutes. Who knows how he will respond and recover after struggling for the first time in a long time? All right, well, one of those teams will have to have uh, in coming off a bad loss. And in week one, there were a couple of bad losses, gentlemen. So let's go ahead and throw this fancy of full screen up because there were some brutal <laughs> week one losses. Hey, you see, you see that? The O U T just says out. 
That's what it is. It's kind of out of the college football <laughs> playoff, right? I mean, think about it. Florida State blew that 17-point lead low against blow, true Burns, freshman. Hey, <laughs> listen, facts don't lie, man. Scoreboards, right? Tennessee, oh, my goodness. It just means more for Georgia State. 25-point favorite they lost. All right, so which one of these teams? Vilma, let's start with you. Which team has to have a bounce-back victory in week two? Well, Miami has to have a bounce back victory for two reasons. You have a new coach in Manny Diaz. He is trying to provide or show or get credibility for his new culture, for instilling what he wants to, as he calls it, the new Miami. So you have to win. A tough loss versus Florida, easily a winnable game. But now if you come back with back-to-back -back losses and start off in the conference 0-1, that is a question mark. You have then some hesitation from not only the team, but the players, the coaches, the fans, as to the culture that you're developing. So Miami has to win this game, get into the right side of uh, this ACC conference. Yeah, this is easy for me, PB. Tennessee, the Volunteers, mm. it is imperative that they win this ball game. You lose to Georgia State week one. You got two players get run off the team. They're making a mockery of your own program on Twitter. Furthermore, the fun is in winning. That's the quote you say in football. The Nick Saban way is only fun if you win ball games. Jeremy Pruitt being an understudy of Saban. Tennessee struggling. If you go 0-2 outside of the SEC, imagine what life is going to be like in the conference. Tennessee, it's imperative they win this week. Yeah, and we looked at that schedule right now, Acho and, and Vilma, we've talked about it. If they don't win this game, there's a potential they could start the season 1-6 and six up in Rocky Top. Not ideal yep. for Jeremy Pruitt in his second season. All right, we got a lot more college football live coming up, including another transfer quarterback, another Heisman winner. We'll talk Oklahoma football in week two big games with the man who knows a little bit about college football. Coach Bob Stoops joined us next. And Saturday, can't miss college football. Welcome back to College Football Live, presented by Dr. Pepper. Joined now by a legend, 10 Big 12 championships and a national championship and a national championship beard as well. Coach Bob Stoops <laughs> joining us right now. Coach, how long have you been rolling with the beard? Oh, it's been almost a, uh, almost a year, I think. So uh, I took it off. I took it off for a couple of days. My wife didn't even notice that I took it off. So I, I grew it back. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, it, it looks good. It looks like you've been watching football and tape. Get ready to coach at the XFL. We'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, let's talk about this week's games. A&M, Clemson, Texas, LSU. What do you think of those matchups? Uh, great matchups. That's the best thing about college football. A lot of it, these early games. Uh, I got to go with Clemson. They're, they're, they're too strong. Uh, uh, you just don't you just don't see a weakness uh, with them anywhere uh, that I can find. And then I'm going to go with our uh, Big 12 brethren. I'm going to go with Texas uh, down in Texas uh, against LSU. I know I know some of you there aren't going to like that. I was going to say, I think Sooner fans right now are kind of saying, hey, what happened, man? First, he's wearing the beard. Now he's going for the Longhorns. What is there something about that Texas team this year you think stands out? It's always better when they're ranked when we beat them. So that's what I'm working for. <laughs> That's fair enough. Hey, listen, your former team, Oklahoma, is going to be ranked pretty high because of Jalen Hurts. He's such a seamless transition coach. Where have you seen him improve and really Lincoln come into his own as a head coach? Well, once uh, Lincoln is so just an excellent uh, uh, play caller, quarterback coach, offensive mind, and a head coach. Uh, he has all the attributes to continue with this great career. But he's going to play to Jalen's strengths. He's always played to Baker, to Kyler's, to all our quarterback strengths. He does a fabulous job of doing it. Always schemes and finds his little wrinkles for big plays. And, and I believe we're going to con continually be consistent running the football. So I think Jalen's going to have a marvelous uh, year here. Uh, on the other side of it as well, too, we saw a little bit of a different look from the defense. Uh, what have you seen from the defense that's kind of changed um, as far as the kind of intensity? Yeah, definitely more, more aggressiveness, I, I think, maybe overall. Uh, I, uh, you know, watching, watching the first half, the first game, uh, I think just a lot more uh, aggression, aggressiveness, uh, guys up front coming off the ball, and, and then even more blitzing. Coach, you got a new book coming out with Gene Wojciechowski, No Excuses, coming out September the 10th, and some great insight. And, and overall, how often did other coaches, not necessarily Lincoln, but ask you for advice on how to build what you built? 
Yeah, I, I get asked a lot just from young coaches, how do I get in the college game? How do, I, how do I have the career you've had or even taking steps towards it? And it's not easy to, you know, to answer it because everybody's life is different. But I thought summarizing it from, you know, growing up in Youngstown, Ohio, a steel mill town, going through my experiences of playing at Iowa and then all my coaching experiences, maybe someone will get some benefit out of it. And, um, you know, and there's a lot of fun experiences in the book. How healthy is the game of college football right now? I know you kind of dive into it in the book about kind of the changing landscape. How healthy is it? Oh, I think it's great. Uh, I, I don't, you look at the TV ratings, the, you know, the stadiums are, are still full. Um, but I, I, I think it's, you know, it's working in a, in a great way. I think they have to look at this transfer uh, situation. I, I don't know that you want to have, you know, players, five, ten players from each team transferring every year, just going wherever they want, playing. That's a little bit different, but uh, I'm sure they'll keep working through that. What does Saturdays look like in the Stoops household now? <laughs> well, my wife, first thing, she's a, a Hawkeye girl from Iowa. First thing she yells in the house, even, even when I was coaching, is go Hawks. So uh, that's, how, that's, how we start, that's how we start Saturday. And then usually if it's a night game, I'll find my way to the golf course at some point in the morning and then uh, get home around 12 or 1 and then start. I've actually had a first couple of tail, tailgates here this, this past weekend, so I'm starting to learn how to tailgate a little bit. I, I would imagine there's a couple of fans up there in Norman that are willing to help you do that. Coach, best of luck with the Dallas Renegades. Best of luck with the uh, golf swing. Make sure you go low, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, all right? Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. You got it. Coach Bob Stoops in the new book, No Excuses, out on September the 10th. All right, coming up, Acho's A-list for week two. What do you got to clear your schedule for in primetime storylines? And Is presented by... Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Now for today's Wendy's Weekend Watch. Bunch of interesting storylines of week two. Ohio State hosting Cincinnati. Buckeyes haven't lost to a team from the state of Ohio since 1921. And some Pac-12 after dark between Stanford and USC. Both teams have quarterback questions. Remember, JT Daniels out for the year. While well, the Cardinals have KJ Costello questionable with concussion symptoms. All right, it's questionable that we gave Emmanuel Acho his own little thing here on College Football Live. It's called A-List Acho. Our Acho's A-list. We're still working through uh, whiteboarding the ideas. All right, give me a storyline, a game, and a player, Acho, that made your A-list. Fellas, let's start with the storyline. You don't get better storylines than this in college football. Matt Brown, former head coach for Texas. Manny Diaz, former defensive coordinator for, my, for Matt Brown. Again, Matt Brown just defeated his last defensive coordinator in Will Muschamp. In 2013, Manny Diaz gave up 550 yards against BYU. Mac fired him on the spot. Is it time for revenge? Now, A-list game last year. Clemson only played two teams close, Syracuse and Texas A&M. Nobody's giving A&M a fighting chance. But A&M, they have a top three rushing defense. At least they did last year. Will that hold true against ETN? Then it comes down just to Trevor Lawrence and Kellen Mond. I think Kellen Mond might be able to outduel him at least for a quarter or two. That is an A-list game. And then the A-list player. Who is the real DBU? Is it Texas or is it LSU? Well, Grant Delpit's going to have something to say about that because he's my A-list player. I think he's the best defensive back in the country. He had five sacks last year. Those are linebacker numbers. He had five interceptions, nine pass deflections. He's a savage. He's a dog. He's a monster. That right there, Grant Delpit, that's an A-list player. Asacho's A-list, PB. There it is. That is, that is a good A-list. Time for a little too high, too low. All right, JV, looking at some of these spreads. Alabama, 55 and a half point favorite against New Mexico State. Too high, too low? Oh, it's definitely too high. Nick Saban never has covered anything that high. So I'm going with history. It's way too high. All right, another game. Michigan, 22 and a half point favorite against Army and JV. Army's won 10 games in a row. Second longest streak in FBS. Yeah, they're, they're going to lose the game still, but it is too high. They have the time of possession with Army that they're going to keep the ball away from Michigan. You play All keep right. away long enough, you'll still lose, but not by as much. All right, Acho, get in here. Final score prediction, LSU-Texas. What's the final? 
Give me 24-21, Texas. Shocker, shocker. JV? Yeah, I know. Such a homer. Let's go 34-24, LSU in that new offense. I got it. 31-20, Bayou Bengals. Thanks for watching College Football Live.